A man was working on the top floor of the Kiefer house recently when he heard noises coming through the wall. It sounded like a card game was going on in the next room. Men's voices and laughter and the clinking of glasses. Suddenly, he heard a voice behind him. The stranger paused for a second then appeared to walk into a wall. The laborer was taken aback. Then curiosity overcame his fear. He pushed and pulled against the bookcase where the figure had disappeared. And a secret room opened up. Inside, there were three men, dressed like the first, and just as drunk, sitting around a card table. One of the players caught sight of him, and instantly, the whole scene vanished. The worker couldn't believe what he had just seen. The Kiefer Mansion was eventually sold, and for most of the 20th century, it served as either a maternity hospital or a chronic care facility. The chronic care facility treated patients with both physical and mental illnesses. I came to the Kiefer Manor that day to do some business with the new owners. I run a catering business. Well, that day my babysitter was sick, so I had to bring my eight-year-old son with me. Well, when I brought him in, there was this really pretty room. It had a huge fireplace. So I sat my son down and I said, "Hun, can you stay here? So after my interview, I came back and I was observing from the doorway and I was watching him and it looked like he was talking to someone. That's my mom. She's a cook. Well, I was just watching him and all of a sudden the the figurines he was playing with, they just, they started to float. It freaked me out. So I ran in there and grabbed his hand and we went running out. It was just, honestly, it was one of the most scariest things I've ever seen. Okay, uh, I think we're going to go ahead to the washroom. I sent something over there before when we were down here. In here, I'm sensing that there was some, uh, little operations going on on people and then they would take them out in, into the morgue. Um, even, even younger kids, like 15, 16 year olds. Oh, it's just an awful feeling. It's just an different death. Um, I don't know. Um, I think it is just an imprint, but I can I can feel it all down my body. I can feel shaking, and as if they they didn't finish, and the person died, and then it just took them out. I I can't stay in here anymore. Yeah, it's really strong. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes the psychics don't prepare themselves, and they walk into a situation where there's a lot of emotional pain or turmoil they're just completely overwhelmed and they have to get out of that situation it's like walking into a massive electrical field and getting zapped and it just it just knocks you back and it's just it's too much for them to take and they got to back off and uh, reassert themselves yeah we need to take a couple minutes wind down she's really overwhelmed here it was really strong whatever was in there and she really needs to shut the cameras off for a couple minutes wind down this is one of the things about investigating when you're psychic and sensitive. You can go into a place and there's absolutely nothing, go back five minutes later and there's a conscious spirit there. I think that's what's just happened to Debbie. We were down here earlier doing a preliminary investigation and we were fine. I mean, the feelings were bad in that room, but we had no storyline to go with it. Now she walked in again and immediately was confronted with a young boy who had been killed or she feels that this young boy was killed in that room so she is now dealing with carrying him with her for the time being trying to figure out what to do with him you okay it really hit her whatever it was it was really brutal i saw you know i think it was 15 16 year old and it, it was a, a like a low bed and they were doing something to his throat and he he didn't he wasn't quite sleeping yet, or whatever they did. I don't know if they have anesthetic, anesthetic or anything in that time. And 
he, they were doing something to his throat, but he wasn't quite sleeping, and he could feel it, and he was, then I felt him that he, he there was blood splurting out of his throat, and um, that he had died on the, on the table when. Yeah, sometimes, especially Debbie, um, she really gets the, the physical effects of what spirits feel at the end of their life, and uh, whatever happened to this boy, whatever operation it was, like, Debbie took on everything that he was feeling up to the last moments, and she was just completely overwhelmed. We had to take her out of the situation, take her upstairs. Um, she was ice cold. We were holding her hand. We had to try and calm her down. It's just, uh, this hasn't happened very often, but um, it even scared me. I'm not used to seeing her like this, and we do investigations all the time. A nurse who was working the late shift in the 1940s had a strange encounter with a ghost from an earlier time. She was doing a final check downstairs when she smelled cigar smoke. It came from a man dressed in a hospital gown. Thinking he'd wandered away from his ward, she approached the man. Excuse me, sir. As she watched the man slowly turn to face her, she was attacked by a group of deranged patients. The onslaught suddenly stopped. Her mysterious attackers had vanished. More than just a building, Kiefer Mansion is a piece of Canadian history. Visitors are encouraged to come and visit, but they should keep an eye out for the spirits who still call it home.